Let's open our Bibles up to James chapter 3, and tonight we're going to focus our attention on verse 1. James chapter 3 and verse 1, where James, by inspiration, writes these words, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And so he encourages us to think seriously about the responsibility of being a master, or we would call it a teacher today. I guess there's always a temptation, if we're not careful, to want to be a teacher because of the prestige or the honor that might go with it. Now, certainly everyone in the church doesn't desire to be a teacher, nor should they all be teachers. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 17, we're reminded if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? We all have different abilities, different skills. All are vital and necessary in the church and need to be used. And yet, James is warning us not to give in to the temptation just to, be a, a, to become a teacher for the notoriety of it. it. It reminds me a little bit of my granddaughters, Riley and Jordan. You see at our house back there, there is a fireplace and uh, it almost looks like a stage. And they love to get up there and there is a canned light, just one, and that, that's their spotlight. And they love to make sure everybody is watching because they're gonna put on a show and they get us to watch and they get up on the stage and they don't know what to do. They don't know what song to sing. They don't know what to say. They just know they wanted to be the center of attention, that they just wanted everybody to watch. You know, Paul warned about men that would have that kind of attitude. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, he says of them, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof, they affirm. In other words, they don't know what they're doing. And yet they wanted to be teachers so that others might honor them. Now, folks, being a teacher can be an honor. You shouldn't want to be a teacher for the honor, but it certainly can be. It's important because teachers have a great influence on those who listen to them. And that influence can be for great good, it also can be potentially for great evil. And that's why James gives the warning that he does. I believe what he's really saying here is that those who desire to be teachers need to make sure they know what they're teaching and that they are doers of what they teach. Throughout the book of James, in chapters 1 and 2, as we've been looking through this, that's been a, an emphasis of James, right? Be a doer of the will, not just a, a hearer. Put your faith and works together because faith by itself is dead. And if you're going to be a teacher, you better be a doer of what you teach. One of the hardest criticisms that Jesus gave was toward the scribes and the Pharisees because they did not do that. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 3, he said of them, All therefore whatsoever they bid you to observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. That's what James was warning against. Instead, we need to follow the instruction that Paul gave unto Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16, where he would write, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. Timothy, you keep preaching and teaching, but you be a doer of that teaching as well. You'll save yourself and those that listen and follow after your good example. 
He warns that teachers will receive a greater condemnation. What he's talking about here is the idea of a heavier judgment. This stresses to us how important it is to make sure that we're teaching the truth. The danger is in leading someone astray. And to lead someone astray carries a very heavy penalty. In Matthew chapter 18 and verses 6 and 7, Jesus would say, But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. You think about something like this, and you might wonder, why then would anyone want to be a teacher? And the reason is because it is the will of God that we share His will with others. That we teach others his will. And yes, there is a greater condemnation he talks about for those who teach but don't do or teach falsely. But there also is that great reward for those who teach the truth. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, we're told, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. We need good teachers. We need teachers who understand the seriousness of teaching God's Word, making sure we know what we're teaching, being doers of His will, not just people who speak it. Understand that there is that weightier condemnation, judgment, but also that great reward for those who will teach the truth and lead men and women to righteousness. And that's why when we come together, what we want to share is simply the gospel of Christ and to offer people an opportunity to come to Him in obedience. We want them to be able to enjoy the blessings that are found in Him. And we want to teach only His will and be doers of it. And so tonight, if you're here and you're not yet a Christian, we want to encourage you to do just what Jesus would have you to do. Believe Him to be the Son of God. Repent of sin. Confess Him before men. And be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and faithfully live for Him. We'd love to assist you if that's your need. And if you're one who has obeyed the gospel but you've fallen away and, and need to come back, we want to pray with you and for you. And so, my friend, if you're subject in any way to the invitation of heaven, come now as together we stand and sing this good song.